Okay, so in this video I wanted to share with you three tips that I often give new programmers who are struggling with PCDMS to help them get organized and help them navigate through what can be kind of a complex uh, interface. Okay, tip number one, organize your files, organize your folders, know where your files are going and how to find them. So what you're looking at here is my desktop. You can see I've got a few shortcuts for programs, profiles, and CAD. Um, I just like to do that so I can access them quickly. But the main thing we need to do is set up file locations in PCDMS. And I'll show you how I did that. So this is the home screen for PCDMS 2019 R1 in this case. Um, so from this screen here, we can just go to Edit Set Search Path right here. So just from the menu. And we can set uh, default search paths for different file types. But for the beginner, I would say make sure you know where your probe files are. So it's nice to know that, and especially if you have more than one version of PCDMS on your system. So you can see I have mine here set to um, not the default location, but I've just created a subfolder called probe files. And if you want to change that, you can just browse and put it wherever you like. We can also set that for default measurement routine. So I've done that, I've done a, a subfolder, but all that means is when you select file open in PCDMS, it will go straight to this folder. But the uh, important point I, I just try to make to new programmers is you need to be aware of where your files are. It just makes life a lot easier. Okay, so that's tip number one, file management. Here's my tip number two. Use the Windows layout toolbar one of my favorite toolbars because I, I need to program fast, I need to demonstrate quickly, and I need to control my layouts. So I'll show you what that is. It's actually a toolbar. You can see it over here on the upper left. And if you just right click the toolbar area, you can see it's right there. I always have this one open. So what it does is, save, is saves preferred layouts. Too often I, I go to a location or I'm, I'm remoting into someone's computer and I see a crazy layout like this it's all over the place um, <laughs> it might be good for you but sometimes I find that especially new programmers don't realize that they can control this so I'll just go back to a preferred layout so the way you set it up if you don't know is you just move your toolbars around you can uh, open other windows. So here's a list of all the windows available. Uh, one I use often is the status window. So if you wanted a layout like this, this is, works for you and your programming, just save it. Hit the save window layout, give it a name, and click OK. So now that's added to the list. So there's another one of mine. Um, Another window layout I like to set all the time is report. So just hit uh, this one here, the third one over. So just a quick way to open the report window. And I just want to see the report and nothing else. When I'm done, I'll just go back to uh, my preferred programming layout with the toolbars that I want access to. Okay, so tip number three, and this <laughs> sounds very simple, but um, use the tab key. Watch what happens. Every time I hit tab, it advances to an editable field. And this is handy if you're doing more advanced programming. You want to change nominals, you want to change uh, the tolerance for a dimension. So if I wanted to edit in this field here, you just hit tab. And you know you're in the right spot because it's, it's only highlighting that, uh, that field there. So another tip is a uh, shift tab will go backwards, tab goes forward. And while I'm on this uh, tab subject, when we are in an editable field, um, another keyboard shortcut you can use here is the F8 and F7 keys. So while it's highlighted after hitting tab, F8 will advance it to the next field. In this case, unit of measurements, there's only two. So hitting F8 again, changes that again. So that's just one way to edit. I use this quite a lot when I'm doing more advanced programming. I find it just speeds it up. Tab, tab, tab. Too often I see new programmers trying to pinpoint the exact location of their cursor 
and it's, it's just very inefficient and so, oftentimes it'll cause cause mistakes if you're in the wrong uh, portion of a field okay so that's pretty much it I just wanted to share those three tips because I, I repeat these so often to new programmers and even experienced programmers who don't realize um, that they can actually control where their files go and stuff like that okay so I uh, hope you found those three tips useful thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time